Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing the second rendition of the clamshell technique, and the only difference between this and tea and biscuits is just the way I cut it in the end. And uh, this color palette was inspired by me sitting in the parking lot of a <laughs> drive through line, and I saw this woman going out to her car, and she was wearing this teal jacket and her hair was dyed pink so I thought that was an interesting color combination and I thought I'd make a soap out of it so that's why this particular soap is called people watching very fitting I'd say and as always I am checking the temperature of my hot oils I guess the ones that I melted I guess I can call them hot oils um, 132 degrees. Now I'm going to pour in my room temperature liquid oils and that should take it down um, pretty significantly. All right, so you can see that it took it down to 88 degrees. So that was a significant jump. And this fragrance will take it down a little bit more. And uh, this fragrance is actually one of my favorites and it does tend to actually slow down trace. It's called Capri de Olivo from Nature's Garden Candles, and uh, it's it's very good for this type of a technique. And uh, you might see some crystals at the bottom of my uh, jar there for my lye. Um, that's actually sugar. It's not lye. So um, I tried to. I just wanted to add a little bit of sugar to bump up the foaming of this recipe, and not all of it dissolved, and that's fine. Um, I got a little bit in there anyway, so that's all I cared about. But I wanted to get this recipe to about thin trace. Um, so a little bit more than a moles, but uh, not quite medium trace, because as you make the clamshell technique, you want to get those little fine jiggles in there, um, inter like the colors kind of coming together like little fingers. So um, anyway, but uh, with this particular design, since I'm only using three colors, I still wanted my main color to be about 50% of the batch, which is white, and then my pink and my turquoise to be the other remaining. So um, this is a 50 ounce batch, so I made 25 ounces white, and then 12 and a half ounces of each other color. And just like with tea and biscuits, I am pouring my colors uh, evenly in a pouring pitcher here. And um, I may have overestimated how much white I poured in here for the pink one because I did, I feel like I might have had a little bit too little for the teal, but it ended up working out okay. It's just um, when you see that, you'll know what I mean. But um, yep, so same technique here. You just want to split your pouring pitcher down the middle between the two colors. Well, your main color and one of your side colors. So here's my other pouring pitcher and I'm just using the pink mixing container for the teal just because you know but it could also be you know as far as the white's concerned it could be that I just poured it kind of weird on accident and so you see that um, there's a little bit more teal on top but I think there's more white on the bottom just based on the way I poured it but uh, the like I said it, it ended up being okay All right, so here's my pouring pitchers, and same thing. I'm using the mica oil technique, and this time it's kind of like a blackish gold. I was gonna do just straight black, but there's still some gold in my thing, so I just left it. And this is a little bit more fluid than I wanted, but um, so that first pour there, I didn't really get to jiggle it very much. But um, you're, I'm doing it down the length of the mold this time instead of down the. Uh, I guess the blunt end or the short end of the mold uh, because I'm going to cut this more like wood grain technique and I wanted to make sure that as many of these clamshells would show as possible but you can see that um, as I get further into this that you'll see that the clamshell uh, actually shows its face more on the surface and so rather than um, yeah I don't know how to explain this so anytime you have a visible design that's kind of on the surface you're gonna to want to cut it like wood grain kind of like you know wood grain itself when you're finally done you see like the actual grain along the top so you don't want to cut it the traditional way you want to cut it kind of lengthwise across the the uh, width of the loaf instead so I think in this case it's kind of the same concept so um, each of those 
little clamshells shows a little bit better that way but um, yeah and I'm sorry that the mold is kind of half cut off by the camera um, I tend to move it around a lot when I'm working and didn't realize that a lot of it kind of was out of shot but really you can see what I'm doing anyway and it, it doesn't change further up the mold And just as a side note here, this particular mold does tend to bow out as it fills up with the soap mixture. So um, you can see me kind of squeeze it a little bit and I have a way of making it so that it's not bowing out when it's cooking. So just keep that in mind if you decide to get a mold like this because you don't want to have soap that just is bulky in the middle. As you can see, this one came out just fine. Uh, nice and straight lines. So now because I was trying to figure out how to cut this the same way as the wood grain soap and this being a different mold, um, it's three inches tall so I think I'm gonna make each bar an inch and cut it that way so I should get nine bars out of this one but uh, my total length is 12 inches and so that doesn't divide by two and a half which is the how tall I want them to be so um, I'm going to cut a quarter inch off on either end and then um, it ends up leaving me with a little over an inch of a bar that's cut the regular way so um, you'll see what I mean here in just a moment but um, yeah so I'm cutting off the uh, quarter inch on the one end and you see that the um, the style is is pretty cool still too um, but just not quite clamshell so it looks I don't know I don't know how to describe that, but uh, I always say everything looks kind of like Tiger Swirl, but uh, I think this one's a little bit different than Tiger Swirl. It's it's kind of neat. So if you want to cut your soap this way and have that sort of a design, you can do that as well. Um, my aim was just to get the clamshell technique though. And um, ultimately when you cut it in the wood grain style, maybe it's the technique I used by pouring it down the side as well. Um, or the length of the mold instead of down the uh, short end but um, yeah you can see the clamshell when you cut it and uh, one of the perils of using a black colored mica swirl is that um, sometimes you can drag the color into the rest and so I had to spend a great deal of time cleaning up the like non or the, the regular colored areas to make it not look so smeary. And there you have it. Uh, this is the final bar. Here's after cleaning it up and cutting. Um, you see I cleared up that black pretty significantly on that and uh, here's the ratios that I used for the different coloring in there and the turquoise did end up looking just as good as the pink so because um, I was afraid about the white but uh, anyway just so you know I do have a TikTok now and I spelled it differently than my Instagram you're not seeing things there is only one period between RE and holding so if you want to follow me there I would love that uh, leave me a comment and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye